afternoon, everyone. I'm Go Local Live contributor Chelsea Gay here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center with our weekly segment of what is happening in Rhode Island. And I know so many of you guys out there are dog lovers. And this Monday and Tuesday is the 2019 Westminster Dog Show. So you guys are going to love my first guest, Wesley Coburn, an expert at dogaday.com. Wesley, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon uh, to weigh in on predictions for this year. Thank you for having me. So Wesley, I mean, you are, your background, you were a sports writer, you work for a site that's part of a big conglomerate of sports writing sites, and love dogs, so now you're sort of the go-to expert uh, alongside a couple others at dogaday.com. So talk to me a little bit about the site and kind of the things that you're covering on a daily basis. Okay, well, um, at Dogaday, we're the fan-sided network site for everything uh, canine related. So we're a... Um, we're a mix of sports, entertainment, and lifestyle. Basically, if it's related to dogs in any way, uh, we cover it. Yeah, so if you've seen those Facebook posts on, you know, Valentine's Day this year, people are going to love on their dogs more than humans, and all the puppy bowl recaps, that's probably coming from your site, okay. which, is, which is great. And I think people actually probably care about their pets on the same level as they care about sports, so it makes a lot of sense that you guys are related to a, to a sports site as well. So um, for those who might not know about the uh, Westminster Dog Show, it's in their 143rd year, I think we just discovered. Um, and, you know, talk to me about how it works, about the categories and sort of kind of your baseline to do research for the predictions for this year. Okay, well, um, there are seven categories. Um, the herding, hound, sporting, non-sporting, toy, terrier, and working groups. Um, all about 200 breeds that the AKC recognizes uh, fall under one of the categories. Okay. So they each compete for best in their category, and then uh, those category winners compete for best in show. And it's all adorable. <laughs> yes. And we love it. So this year you guys put out a really cool article about your predictions, you and a couple other members of the staff, or one other member I think, um, kind of feeling out what you think for this year and it's actually appropriate because of the bracket process but we'll talk about that later but so tell me about your predictions this year if you could and kind of a little brief reason why for each one okay well um for the uh herding group i went with the australian shepherd because i'm partial to australian shepherds because <laughs> they're then, awesome uh, yeah. <laughs> my colleague kimberly went with the border collie for the same reason and then in the Hound group, uh, I chose the Whippet because a Whippet named Whiskey has won uh, the National Dog Show and the AKC National Championship last year. So I think he'll keep on his role. Yeah, I think he's going to continue on with that. Right. Uh, Kimberly picked the Dachshund for the Hound category. Yep. Um, for the sporting category, I picked the Irish Setter because I enjoyed reading um, Jim Claggiard's novels about a group of Irish Setters in the dog show world. Yep. Um, and then uh, Kimberly picked the lab because they've been the most popular breed for almost 30 years. Uh, in the non-sporting category, I picked the French Bulldog because a French Bulldog won this category at the AKC National Championships in December. Okay. And then Kimberly picked the Chow Chow because uh, it's one of her favorite breeds. Yep. You got to go and with the favorite breed in some cases. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> in the uh, Terrier group, I picked the Wire Hair Fox Terrier because I don't know, I just like the shape of their face. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And then um, Kimberly picked the Staffordshire Terrier, which is uh, kind of pitbull. Yeah, big, like, sturdy dog. Right, definitely. Then in the very not sturdy dog category, uh, the toy group, <laughs> I picked the uh, Shih Tzu, just because they're small and fluffy and those seem Always to be well Always pretty, dogs. yeah. <laughs> well received. Yes, and then Kimberly picked the Pomeranian for that. Okay, category. awesome. And so this year, as part of oh, and we didn't we got to talk about best in show. Yeah, obviously I forgot oh. to bring up the biggest one. <laughs> I think I think the Whippet will uh, continue his reign. So you are going with the Whippet this year, and yes. so the interesting thing is Purina is also sponsoring a bracket, and I'm not going to be able to say it right. It's a huge mouthful. I don't know if you know the whole name of what the bracket is. Um, okay. We'll put the we'll put the link actually in our in our write-up but they are allowing you sort of like March Madness to go in and choose your seven picks so tell us a little bit about how that works the prizes and sort of how you know the fun of participating in that 
Right, okay. So it's the uh, Pure Unit Pro Plan Westminster, Westminster Dog Show Bracket Challenge. Okay. Yeah, they, could have, they couldn't shorten the name like at all, I guess. I know, right? But it's the uh, fourth year that they've been doing it, I believe. Okay. You go to, um, you go to the website and enter your uh, fix for each group. And then from those picks, you choose which breed you think will win best in show. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very similar to a March Madness uh, pool. Yeah. So you're and, not gambling uh, at the casino, but you're, uh, you're, you're taking a guess here. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, and then they're uh, splitting a million dollars um, among the winners. Okay. There are multiple winners. All right, so you can go on, make your predictions, even if they're just guesses based on kind of your favorite dogs that you have at home, and you can you can win a million bucks or split a million bucks with a couple other people. So it's definitely worth checking out. I think it's a really fun way to participate in the show. And then speaking of the show, it goes on over two days. And what are some things that happen as a part of the Westminster Dog Show that aren't just you know the pieces you'd see on TV with you know showing dogs? I mean. Are there agility contests? What else are we going to see this, this upcoming uh, dog show? Well, I'm not sure what they'll actually show, but um, in real life, there's usually a frisbee demonstration or an agility demonstration, you know, to keep the, uh, to keep the fans in attendance there uh, occupied, you know, during the breaks. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then there's also, you know, it's in New York City. Uh, coming up this weekend, actually, tomorrow, the AKC Museum of the Dog is opening. Okay. So, you know, they could, you know, visit that uh, if you were around New York City. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so, you know, just sort of a, kind of an aside, but this is the most prestigious event in the country in terms of dog shows. You know, it's right. purebred dogs, but with the whole movement of adopt and not shop, I mean, how does this sort of fit into that space while the other movement kind of exists at the same time? Kind of where where does this fit in? Is are people still kind of supporting this in droves, or do you notice that it doesn't generate as much interest based on sort of the adopting movement? I think it's kind of been. Um, I think it kind of occupies the same like niche as uh, horse racing. You know, yep. kind of kind of elite. But, yeah. Um, so that I think that sort of higher class. Yeah. So uh, so there'll always be kind of a spot for people to display purebred dogs because just the history of it, I guess. <laughs> the history and the and just you can't take your eyes off some of these uh, these dogs that look like all different types of things and are groomed very interestingly as well. So on, on a cuter note, we just wrapped up the Puppy Bowl this past week and I loved your article um, kind of outlining it. It's really great. If you go to dogaday.com, I think it's still on the home page. But, you know, give us, I mean, I know it already happened. It's not really news at this point, but I'm just curious to see if some memorable moments that you that you recognize from the Puppy Bowl this year. Okay, well, it's, uh, it's on an annual planet. It's an annual event. Um, it's basically a parody of the Super Bowl <laughs> where two teams of puppies, um, quote, play a football game. <laughs> yep. They're really into it. <laughs> they, are, they are. So um, Team Ruff was able to hold was able to get a huge lead in the fourth quarter, and they held off a furious comeback by Team Fluff to win uh, by a 59-51 score. Wow, and that was like an overtaking because they haven't won before, correct? Well, they have, but it's oh. been about three years. Oh, so they've this is a three-year comeback yes. for Team Ruff versus Team Fluff, which, again, so cute. We actually had the Puppy Bowl dogs on Go Local the, representing Rhode Island last year, so was a great time, and I believe all of the dogs got adopted. I think that's usually always the case because the purpose is to get all these dogs adopted, and they did, so successful year outside of the win, which is really great. So anything else you can tell us this year that we should watch out for at the dog show? Anything that you're specifically excited for as, as you tune in before we, uh, before we sign off? Well, um, it'll, you, know, you get the chance to see all different you get to see every single breed that the AKC recognizes, you know, so there's, you know, there's super rare breeds, there's the breed that you might have sitting on your couch, yep. um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great way to see all the different types of dogs that there are and get um, acquainted at least with some of their characteristics. Yeah, and do you happen to know if there's any new introductions of dogs this year that were not recognized last year? I think there are two new breeds. Okay. One is from Norway and has an unpronounceable name. <laughs> yep. I don't, and I don't remember 
anything about the other new breed. Well, they're probably both unpronounceable names. I mean, at this point, coming up with a new dog is it's pretty difficult, so <laughs> we'll have to look that one up. Well, Wesley, thanks so much for tuning in um, with your predictions for this year, and we hope everybody goes out, go online, participate in the bracket, do it with your friends. Um, you could win a million dollars, so I know I'll go on and, and vote for what I think are the cutest dogs, which is probably not the best way to go, but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> but Wesley, thanks so much for, for joining us and giving us your insight into this year. And uh, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about a new Axe Bar that just opened in Rhode Island, so we'll be back in a couple minutes to talk about that. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, guys. I'm already kind of, I have an ax at this point, so <laughs> welcome uh, Peter Martins from R1 Entertainment. If you guys uh, don't know, it's the entertainment complex out in Lincoln, which has karting and bowling and arcade games and food, and now an ax bar, yes. which, yeah, yeah. Which, which I'm going to ax him about oh, right now. Ax puns. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, let's do as many ax puns as we can. Excellent. Excellent, yes. <laughs> So, Peter, you know, tell us about the complex in general first, okay. if people haven't been yet, which I think yeah. most people have checked it out because karting is, is pretty cool. It's very yeah. in right now. So tell us a little about that. Okay, so I think you gave, like, the, the short version of it. I can I just can. make it longer, but it's, <laughs> it's about electric go-karts. It's quick racing. It's mm -hmm. an asphalt track with a bridge. It's what, they, what we call European-style racing. Okay. Maybe you can tell my accent. I'm from Belgium. Belgium. From so it's Belgian racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's actually <laughs> it's Dutch Belgian, let's say racing. Yeah. But it's uh it's it goes very quick. So we have different speeds depending on your level and mm -hmm. your skill. You can go go quicker. And then, like you said, we have we think that it's a very beautiful restaurant. But people can come and check yeah. it out themselves and decide a fuel for themselves. Fuel restaurant, very yes. fitting. Fuel up before you. Yes. And, go and on your uh, experience. Yeah. And uh, bowling, billiards, darts, that's what we have up there. Big VIP room for, we can do parties up to 400 persons in our, in nice. our building. Nice, perfect. And we had 2,000 square feet left that was not used. Yeah, and so then, what are you going to do? Yeah, and then we said, let's, let's Throw bring axes. in some, something exciting. Okay, yeah. so what was the kind of inspiration behind this? I mean, it's sort of... I don't want to say random, but I mean, axe throwing, I, there's so many other things. I mean, there's so many cool, like, yeah. you got to be different now. So yeah. there, is, there isn't an axe bar in Rhode Island no. that I know of legally. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can throw axes at stuff if you want. Yeah, yeah, no, I guess but, so. So what was the inspiration? How did you come up with this idea? So every year in November, there is the biggest entertainment exhibition in, in Orlando and Florida oh, in nice. November. Okay. And there is all these arcade games and... and I guess Disneyland goes there to buy roller coasters, and but we're like a let's say a small. You Disney weren't going to buy a roller coaster. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's a different realm. But yeah. Um, and we saw a few vendors selling X throwing in different shapes and formats, and then we started doing research. Okay. And we said, this is a cool addition to our place. It yeah. It fit the image. Okay. Yeah. So you know, it seems like it could be a little dangerous so i mean what's kind of how yes. are you controlling this yes. environment so, so you don't have so people that's, that's 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 a very good question that's also what we asked ourselves like okay what, what is this thing what is this x throwing and this is the the first reaction that that everybody has but yeah. they're they are popping up like mushrooms 
in the whole United <laughs> States. Okay. And that means that um, just because of the, 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 the grand scheme of things, that other people are doing it. And they went through all the research and, yep. and all, through all these things. So we called a lot of operators that are already doing go-karting mm -hmm. and that also started doing this. Okay. And since we are a go-kart operator, we're all about safety and fun. So okay. we know very well how to run an activity mm -hmm. that's like th a thrill. Okay. We give a go-kart in somebody's hands to, to do fast okay. racing. Okay. And now we give somebody an X. So we. Give him an X. Why not? <laughs> so do I have to look in the camera? I was yeah, wondering. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just you talking should. to you. you yeah, should, yeah. I can. So yeah, I was always. Don't scare there. the people with no, the X. No, 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 no. <laughs> so I can, I can tell the, peop the people. Um, and now the it's it's the same thing. Is you put procedures in place. People have to comply to certain safety standards. Okay. We box it off, but within that box, it's fun. It's throwing X's at targets. We do things like only one person per lane is allowed. Yep. You cannot pass an X because now we have the covers on it, but mm -hmm. in the lanes, they don't have a cover. Okay. So we will never pass an X to another person. Yep. We always put it in the you hangar. You can't kind of go walking around with yes, your X. Yes. Yeah. And then... Uh, can't take it to the bathroom. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it stays within the lane and we have experts. Okay. So... A experts. Experts, yeah, uh -huh. experts. <laughs> experts that will teach you how to throw an X. So there's like the double-handed yeah, throw. Yeah, I saw that on the website. Yeah, so there's a single-handed throw and it's all about, it's not X throwing, it's more like X swing and release. Okay. It's all about the technique and how you do it. Just Because like it's supposed to kind of swing, like yeah. circle around. It doesn't it's go just straight. It's supposed to make like Got it. a full circle, yep. but it's not so much about how hard you throw it, how, how much strength you put in, but like just like golf or like bowling, it's all about that, that swing and putting your whole yeah. body weight. The trajectory, in, in, all sorts of things. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but so it's fun. The, the, the thing is, it's like as soon as you know how to do it, it's all about trying to get that bullseye. I don't doubt that it's fun. I mean, yeah. I don't. So there's two ways you can do it. Yes. Sort of the fun way, which you can go with a group of people, you can all go in your own lane yes. and they give you lessons and yeah, you can exactly. kind of just throw an X, but then you also have a tournament side of it. So that's kind of fun. You can compete. Yeah. How does that work? Tell yeah. me about that. So uh, the tournament, the, like you say, the, the, the basics are the same. So if you book the tournament with us, we'll teach you the basics first. We'll play a few games with you. And as soon as you feel comfortable throwing axes and hitting that target, We'll do a tournament and okay. then it just depends how many are we can do tournaments up to 60 people where we use that you know those sheets probably from like tournaments like in high school yeah where this team against that team we do it we do exactly okay. the same thing and it is uh trying to do five you do five throws mm -hmm. and you can do like on, on every target there's like one two three four and f bullseye is five points mm -hmm. whoever gets the most points goes to the, okay. to the next round and so with karting, I feel like, you know, people get really into it and they tend to go back. You know, there's memberships in karting. You yeah. start your own kind of league inorganically. But what about, like, so with axe throwing, do you see it as something that's yeah. like a one-time experience and people aren't, aren't going to necessarily come back? Or do you see this as something that becomes a regular in people? Yeah, lives? we see the same thing in racing. So the, our biggest crowd is people that come out one Saturday night a year to throw axes. This week you go play bowling, next week you go go-karting, the week after you yeah. go to the movie theater. That is, we are an entertainment center for, for, for the public. Okay. But we also will start doing leagues for those people who really are into it. Okay. So now we have two types of axes, uh, this bigger the one, big one and the smaller one. And we have a very little one that we bring out if this one is still too heavy. So we, we have three axes, but in the future we will okay. start doing leagues where people can bring their own axes and... All of that good stuff. BYOX. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, that's good. So, so right now you're just doing the tournaments and kind of the fun rounds. Yeah. And then you do have food and, yes. and drinks, which, how, how are you controlling that? Yeah, <laughs> so um, we're, we're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's on our liquor license. We have okay. To go to, because we have a liquor license for, for the restaurant. Well, also because people have sharp objects. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, they're not that sharp, actually. Oh, okay. Of, but it's, it's. But I mean, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> you're, you're right. So um, we have to go through the paperwork and the process to get okay. the liquor license. But, but currently, you got food. Yeah, we have food. But um, when we were investigating all those different places, a lot of them even allow people to bring their own alcohol. 
So oh, it's, where is if, that? Uh, yeah, if you just start Googling, there is Urban Access. I think they have wow. 25 different locations. And then there is like Bad Axe. They have 10 locations. And oh a lot of them don't, don't have their own bar. So okay. they tell people, so just you bring just your own food bring and bring your own thing. Of course, we don't allow that since we have the, yeah. the restaurant. But well, it's also, just you probably want to control how exactly. much people so, are drinking yes. when they're throwing sharp yeah. things you yeah. know, around your... Yeah, so that's why we have <laughs> trained all the experts and all the bartenders that will work in that area. Like, hey, this is, this is the rules that we play with, and then it's all okay. good. And then, so in terms of, you just had your opening last yeah. week. How's it been? Has it been busy? I yeah, mean, what's the turnout been? Yeah, so we, we have an online booking system that works really well. So people just go online, book their, book their lanes themselves. And like any entertainment activity, like in the weeknights, we open from 5 till 10. Okay. And we have, we are, we have a decent busy, busy, busy. But on a Friday and Saturday night, it's it's people really want to yeah it's where people are queuing out. and yeah yeah then it's really really important that you pre-book because yeah. that, then you will have some wait if yeah. you don't. Yeah, a friend of mine's having her birthday party there Saturday. so oh. I might be throwing axes, so oh. don't nobody go because <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust myself to do that. But it sounds like it would be fun. Yeah. So it's twenty-five for the yes, more casual, so and tell me about that. Yes, so it's $25 for the X fund, and the time depends on how many people you are. So okay. if you're a group of two or three, it's 30 minutes, but it's enough. The X fund is all about yeah. learning all you the techniques. You have to be sore the next day. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so you, yeah, you get 15, 10, 10, 15 minutes per person to play, which is, which is enough to enough get the time technique. Time. That's the X fund all about. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can come out with two persons to, to do that. The X tournament is 45, and it's two hours. Okay. But then it's really a group of six because a tournament with two, it's kind of dumb, right? Yeah. So for six mo most board games, you need a little yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from six, from six people and more, up to six to 60, we can okay. do nice tournaments. And so are you, like, this is kind of the final addition to the R1 no. entertainment? Are you guys going to be adding some more stuff? No. So... Um, we still have a, a bit of space that we're thinking of doing something else. We're still in the process of deciding exactly what we're going to do, but not this year. That will be for... What for are you thinking? Um, it's what we're thinking right now is, do you know escape rooms? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we are, we are thinking of building an activity that is what you could say is the cross section between an escape room hotel and the Olympic Games. So that people come in with teams and they oh, play and they try to earn medals and it's mini games that you yeah. from room to room. It's a, but cool. it's I'll come. It's a it's a bit of an explanation. <laughs> you'll come, yeah, you'll come out another if time. If we have the <laughs> video, it will it will be a lot easier okay, to. Okay, yeah, I'll okay. come back next year. Yeah, you come back and, yeah. and tell us about yeah. the hotel escape room yeah. Olympics. Yeah. Yes. when that opens, so yeah. <laughs> we'll be happy yeah. to learn about it. So congrats on the grand opening. Yeah, thank you very I'm, much. I'm glad it's been busy and good. I mean, it's a, it's a, there isn't one yet in Rhode Island, no. so I'm sure it'll. It'll definitely pique people's interest, and hopefully. Yeah, I, uh, I'm still there. So when I first published this online, I put first X bar or X throwing in Rhode Island, and then somebody sent me a message that it's not true. There is somewhere a secret X throwing <laughs> bar here in Rhode Island. Okay. So and it's invite only. So maybe after this conversation, they oh, sent the boat they'll about, send us like, a and I think it's like some kind of secret association or something. But secret axe there, throwing. There is some secret. Wow, I didn't know we were that cool yeah. in Rhode Island. We have a secret axe bar. There we go. So if somebody okay. can send well, us fine. The first non-secret yeah. axe yeah. bar in Rhode Island. <laughs> well, we hope everybody goes and checks yeah. it out and it remains safe. Stays in their lane and yeah. yeah, we you know be careful with your yeah. what the, careful what they with your do, axes. And I will do it with the covers on because between when you start a tournament, you you hit the axe like that, and normally let's let's do it with the back that you can hear it. So normally it, it makes that sound. Uh -huh. So when you start a tournament, when you're Satisfying. going to play, you do like bam, and then you switch lanes and stuff uh, like that. Okay. So well, it's I mean, all there's archery. I can't imagine this is another level different than I mean your archery is sharp too and. Yeah. It's, you know, well maintained. So I think, hey, I think it could be a really good time. I'm, I'm excited yeah. to try it out. <laughs> and what, can I add one more thing? Of course. So we have, since we're electric go karts, ecolo ecology is, is also important for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we we have built the uh, X bar together with a Lincoln-based artist collective called the Reliquarium. It's a very difficult word, but I'll take I'll send yeah. you <laughs> the name so that you can tag them too. 
and they have put a lot of love and passion because you can build X, but if you come out, you'll see that all the wood is burnt. It's treated in a way that it looks really cool. We have awesome. we have um, recycled wood as as like a slab. Okay. All these all these kind of things. We have mm -hmm. a tree that from the Lincoln Woods that, or I don't know if it's from the Lincoln Woods, but a local tree that got in like a lightning strike that we recycled and we made wow. tables out of it. So that's. That spirit, that that passion and love, I guess, for nature is what the reliquarium brought into to nice. it. So, so yeah, you so should invite them. I'll send you. These, okay. these guys have a good story. Oh, I would love to. Yeah. I'd love to chat with them. Yeah. Well, Peter, thank you so much yeah. for joining so. us today. Yeah, we'll do a clink. We'll do a sign off clink. Yeah. And uh, we, you can check out the Axe Bar. I think it, what is the website? xbar.net Axbar and that will lead you to the website of yeah, R1 Yeah, you can go Bible. on, book your lane and go and throw some axes. So, thank, thank hey, you very much for having maybe me. do it for Valentine's Day. I don't yeah. know. So you can yeah. throw some axes with your significant other. Yes. Well, Peter, thanks for coming on again. We will be right back, guys. We are going to talk to the Maddie Pro Project about the Mardi Gras Gala coming up this weekend. So it'll be really great. We'll be right back in just a couple minutes. And a really cool event that you guys have coming up this weekend. So thanks uh, for coming on and chatting with me today. I appreciate Thank you it. for having us. Yeah, awesome. So um, for those who are familiar with the Mad Maddie Project, formerly known as uh, the Maddie Fund, mm -hmm. you guys have recently in the past year merged with the Epilepsy Foundation of New England. Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about kind of you've been a part, a part of it for 16 years. So yeah. tell me a little bit about kind of the transition from the Maddie Fund and how that kind of worked into now the Maddie Project and sort of how that's advanced everything. Sure, so um, we uh, merged with the organization, um, the Maddie Fund and the Epilepsy Foundation New England in 2017. So we became um, the Maddie Project. Um, so we're effectively one organization. We service um, families and individuals affected by epilepsy um, all across New England and in Rhode Island specifically. Um, I'm the Rhode Island Field Service Manager, so we um, do all different programs and services for families. Mm -hmm. Sort of an extension of you know where um, where the doctors' visits leave off. We sort of take over. We run support groups, camps, um, programs for youth um, and kids. Um, yeah, it's a really great. It's a really great network for yeah, exactly. People. And and so um, tell us about kind of like go way back. So how how did this start as a whole? I mean, what what was the Maddie Fund? How did it come about? Um, well, the Maddie Fund uh, was started by the the Saravos, um, a Saravo family out of um, their son Maddie Saravo, who passed away from a prolonged seizure back in two thousand three. So that was really a, a, a labor of love starting that organization in yeah. honor of their son. And it's really grown to yes. be what it is today now servicing four different states, correct? Right, right. And, and really helping countless families. It too. was really amazing that we were able to bring um, their, their incredible programs and services across all of New England now. Yeah, so how did that partnership kind of come about? What was sort of the spark that led to saying, okay, let's combine our resources and get bigger? Um, I don't know, I guess um, really 
our new CEO, Susan Lynn, took over um, Epilepsy Foundation New England back in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and really, it just was a great partnership. Yeah. You know, between the Saravos and, and our new CEO, and it just worked everything kind of. So now it's just a bigger reach, and yeah. mm -hmm. now the Maddie Project and the Epilepsy Foundation of New England, which are sort of one but still operating as exactly. two names, can help more families. And so you mentioned support groups, you mentioned camps. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else is happening sort of on a day-to-day -day basis over at the Maddie Project? What are you kind of focused on regularly? Um, we do a program called um, My Friend Maddie. It's an education program mm -hmm. that we bring to schools, um, educating elementary age children. Um, that's the, the book um, that the Saravos wrote uh, about yeah. their son, Maddie. Um, so we go out into schools and we educate kids about epilepsy, okay. which is really fun. We also do school personnel trainings, yep. um, first responder trainings, um, which is really important, educating mm -hmm. the public about epilepsy. Um, really important to remember that one in 26 people will develop epilepsy in their lifetime, which yeah. is a big statistic that people don't realize. Yeah, I was just going to ask, you know, it's one of the larger organizations regard in relation to epilepsy in the U.S. And sort of, so, what is sort of the importance of organizations like this for families, you know, to have out there? I mean, what do you see the real value in the Maddie Project as? I think one of the most important things is bringing people together. Um, a lot of people who um, receive a diagnosis like this feel so isolated initially. Yeah. And um, they find an organization like the Maddie Project or Epilepsy Foundation New England, and um, you know they get a sense of um, belonging and togetherness. Mm. And um, you know they come to a support group or a walk or an event, and they just find other people that can relate to what they're going through. And something like that is really an invaluable resource that we can provide. Yeah, it also really involves people that do have epilepsy in the organization as exactly. well, which kind of is a higher purpose and, you know, mm -hmm. a, a sense of belonging in that regard, which is, right, which right. is really great. So often you have really cool and fun events that bring people together that have been impacted by epilepsy mm -hmm. or just those who support the cause. So there is one happening Saturday, so yes, that's why we yeah. have you guys on today, which is, uh, which is really coolly named the Maddie Gras Gala. Yes, we're so excited about it. Yeah, so this is sort of, if anybody's been to the Snow Angel Balls, which are you know, sponsored by the Maddie Fund over the years. I think they were usually at the Crown Plaza. Yep. And then last year there was a casino night, which is a little bit of a difference mm -hmm. from that event. Now, this year, you guys are coming over to Providence, mm -hmm. to yeah. the Renaissance Hotel, which is a really cool venue yeah. uh, for Mardi Gras. So how did this happen? I mean, we're almost at Mardi Gras, I guess, in March. So it's really pretty fitting. So kind of how did this idea happen and what, what, what are we going to expect this year? Sure. So we're going through, you know, a continuation of the Snow Angel Ball and sort of different theme. You mentioned the casino night last year, and before that we had a Roaring Twenties theme. Okay. So I think a themed party is always fun to get people out and excited. Yes. And I mean, who doesn't love to dress <laughs> who up? Who doesn't yeah. love a themed party? Yeah. And especially with cr purple being the color yep. of epilepsy, Mardi Gras is a perfect so theme for this. Yeah, so. Right. so fitting. So fitting. And so what can we expect if you attend the event? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always, you know, sit down dinner and kind of auctions. What are, we, what are people going to see when they get there? Yeah, so uh, doors open at 7 o'clock at the Renaissance, and we'll have silent auction items. We serve a complimentary signature drink. Oh. So New Is Orleans it themed. <laughs> it will be hurricanes. Oh, yeah. hurricanes. Yeah, nice. with hors d'oeuvres, and we have a pasta station. Great. And we'll have um, a couple games going on as well to keep the entertainment going. Okay. And we'll have a band and a DJ. So yeah, there's always good dancing. There yeah. is. There is always yeah. good dancing. And good silent auction items. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know of any, like, pretty spectacular ones this I year. I think we yeah. have a couple, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a Rob Gronkowski signed jersey nice. and signed football, mm -hmm. okay. which is so fitting after the Patriots it's Super Bowl win. super fitting, yep. And if you're not too keen on vacuuming around the house, we do have an iRobot. Oh, <laughs> nice. And if you have to upgrade your entertainment system, we have a new Sony sound bar. Oh, well, that's mm -hmm. so great. And these are all things that were donated by mm -hmm. those in support of the organization. That's really great. And then, so you can win silent auction items, you can dance, eat, 
And what does everything, everything goes back to the Maddie Project it as the Maddie well? Project okay. and yeah. all the programs and yeah. services that Christina mentioned okay. down here in Rhode Island. And so besides this upcoming event, which is sort of one of your bigger events of the year and more fun and sort yeah. of laid back, um, what else do you guys have coming up in the coming months? Are you working on anything new or are we kind of continuing with the programs that exist? What, what can we expect over the next few months from you guys? Um, in the next coming months, um, we're scheduling some parent meetups. Okay. Um, which are, as we mentioned, really important to bring people together. Um, we're continuing with our, our Young Leaders Network. Um, and that's for teens and young adults to get them together once a month. Um, Those with epilepsy. With epilepsy, yep. yeah. Um, and we're also, we have an adult support group that we run. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, another monthly group that meets at Rhode Island Hospital. Okay. Um, and we have an Easter egg hunt. That's nice. Fun. That's for, you know. <laughs> Easter for um, young kids with epilepsy and their families. And then we have a, a, a bunch of different camps going on. Awesome. Uh, a therapeutic horseback riding camp, a, a sailing camp, which was new last summer. It was really successful, so we're doing it again this summer. Okay. So um, great. everybody had a great time. We're really looking forward to it. Yeah. So I always ask because it's so, it's so nice to talk about, do either of you have um, sort of a story that you can recollect that was just really kind of touched your heart and was inspirational as being a part of the organization for so long? I'm sure you have a million, <laughs> but is, are there any that you can kind of think of that kind of stick out to you over the past year? Over the past year? No, it doesn't have to I think for me. It um, <laughs> so can be the, anytime. <laughs> yeah, I've been at the organization almost two years now. Okay. And last year was the first time I was able to go to Camp Maddie which is a therapeutic horseback riding camp yeah. in Rehoboth, Mass. Um, and being there and being around the kids and hearing them say, you know, I've been, never been around so many children like me that have oh. epilepsy and know what I'm mm -hmm. going through. And here I am being so independent, being able to ride a horse on my own with my new friends is really powerful to oh, hear that that's message. That's great. That's awesome. And I still think, do you have yeah. one you want to share? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's really a Probably lot. Probably a million, there's, I know. <laughs> there really are. I mean, as David mentioned, camp is always a really powerful experience and, and being around the kids who get to meet other people. Yeah. Um, I feel like the Young Leaders Network is a really amazing experience for a lot of kids. They're a lot of times meeting um, other kids that have epilepsy for the first time mm -hmm. um, and, you know, learning a lot about themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, reaching a level of self-awareness for, for the first time. Um, learning how to be a little bit independent. That's a really powerful thing. Yeah. I can't imagine what it must be like to feel isolated and then meet a whole group of people that right. are experiencing the same thing that you are. I mean, that must be really exciting to be a part right. of and see. And similarly, we get the same um, reactions at support groups, too, with adults with epilepsy, yeah. where you know they get this aha moment when they're at a support group and they meet another adult with epilepsy that's experiencing the same thing that they go through. And that's also a really powerful um, experience to witness. Yeah, know. I bet. I mean, it's amazing. Well, thank you guys for coming on to talk to us a little bit about the Maddie Project and congratulations on the expansion. That's yeah. really yeah. awesome. And I mean, I'm sure you'll continue to grow and make a huge <laughs> impact in the community. And uh, let's talk about how people can attend Mardi Gras this <laughs> weekend. If you're looking for something to do on Saturday night and yes. you want to dress up in your Mardi Gras best, <laughs> how, yeah. do we, uh, how do we purchase tickets? So you can visit MaddieGala.org to purchase tickets. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be on sale until 3 p.m. tomorrow, okay. which is Friday. And you can also buy them at the door if you want to do find out, you know, People last minute, yeah, last minute dance. Just yeah. decide to head over yeah. to the Renaissance. Really cool venue, yeah. so it should be very, it's very fitting for the 7 for the 7 p.m. at the Renaissance. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So we hope you guys get out there to support a great cause. You can go get yourself a Gronk jersey, mm -hmm. or you can be lazy and have an eye robot <laughs> clean your house. So plenty of great things to win. Christina and David, thank you so much for taking thank some time you. to chat with me thank today. You. And uh, we hope everybody gets out this weekend and, and celebrates in some way, but why not this way? This seems, right. seems like a great thing to do on a Saturday <laughs> night. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back with our last guest, our resident, Jim Fortier, who's going to talk with us about some Valentine's Day style ideas. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back in just a couple minutes.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go, Lo Go Local Live contributor Chelsea Gay. I'm messing up who I am. Already. Because you're here. Uh, here with Jim Fortier, our resident style guest, style guru. And so we're happy to have you on the week before Valentine's Day because I, I think all of our, our males need some style tips for dressing next weekend, oh, yeah. taking well, their lady out on a yeah, date. I think, I think it's, it's a good idea to yeah. have some, some things. And yeah. Also, you know, some of the things we brought today, um, you know, the, the guys can come in and pick up for their wives if they wanted to pick up something special. They make special. some nice gifts. Some beautiful yeah, things absolutely. here. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, though, is we just got back from the market show in New York. In New York, which yeah. Which was great. Um, we saw a lot of our, the usual suspects, um, some beautiful things, a lot of Italian product again, outerwear. Uh, shirts, socks. I found a new cashmere company wow. that is called Fair Trade Cashmere. Mm -hmm. And these guys own the goats um, in cashmere and they comb them themselves and, the, and they pay the workers the money that they're supposed to I thought you were going to say pay the goats. No, they, well, they <laughs> probably pay the goats. But they, they really do a, an exquisite job of making sure that people are paid for the labor and it's not an abuse system where okay. they, they just. Um, use them for their labor and so th this is a really good thing we love that and, okay. and they had some beautiful things they have baby cashmere sweaters which is really difficult to find i know this is going to sound funny but when you have baby cashmere uh, the cashmere has to come from a baby goat that's under mm -hmm. eight months old and it has to be its first combing. Oh. So, so I thought you were talking about cashmere for a baby. No, no, no. I'm oh, talking okay. about baby cashmere goats. So because they're so young, the, 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 their, their fur, their, the fibers are so soft. Uh, so, because it, so in order for it to be wow. called baby cashmere, they have to be under a year old and it has to be their first combing. And then so there's less of that cashmere and so it's a little more rare and it's softer and so wow. we'll be getting some sweaters made from that. And that must take a lot of goats for it's one a, you sweater. Know, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of goats. <laughs> it's a lot of goats. <laughs> it's a lot of goats. A lot of goat milk. You're going to have to know. tell me how many goats yeah. next, I'll find out. next show. I'll, I'll, I'll find out. Curious. I think it's 20 for like a 20 sweater. 20 goats yeah. for one sweater. Yeah, I think so. I think it's something like that, but I, I could be wrong. But I'll find out. I'll find out. Wow. First of all, I, I have to tell you how amazing you look. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, your haircut looks great. I did. I cut oh, I off think, all my I hair. I wonder why you look so different. Oh, it's because you're married. Yeah, that's, I, that's right. I that's cut my right. hair off. I got married. We talked about that on my right. last show. I was already married. You were so already married, but I was. you didn't go full in with the hair. No, I didn't cut off all my hair until she after that. Yeah, yeah. I, I had to marry him and then cut off all my hair. Right, because if you would cut off in. your hair first, he probably wouldn't have married Lock him in, cut off all the hair, and yeah, do all the do all the weird stuff after you got married. Yeah, exactly. No, I, uh, I donated it. Oh, good for you. What, what yeah, cost because you I needed, you know, when they have baby donation hair. <laughs> was it your first combing? <laughs> it was my first combing. <laughs> Who did you donate it to, seriously? Um, I did it to Pantene Great Lengths because I think apparently Locks of Love is selling or got busted for like selling the hair. So. Oh. So, but it was for the same type of. Yeah, you get Pantene makes wigs out of the hair for that's great. and donates them to people with cancer. Nice yeah, that's very nice. So of you. Congratulations. I cut it all that's, off and donated it. What a very kind thing to do. My first about. combing. First combing. They're gonna make a sweater out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Baby goat <laughs> sweater. Anyway. Anyway. Um, <laughs> we didn't drink before this. So. No, I certainly didn't. You might. So, have. I so we are gonna. What did you bring me today? So. <laughs> Before we get so, so let's off topic. Talk about, let's talk about what you have on and, yes. and, and these other products that we brought this here. This is the only reason why I invite you, by the way. Is I know. So that I can steal scarves. <laughs> so, so I found this company last year called <laughs> From the Road. And um, there's a, it's a very small company out mm -hmm. of Nepal. And this is woven cashmere. So okay. this is crinkle cashmere. These women actually weave the cashmere. Mm -hmm. in Nepal and then they hand dip this. This is all It's like an ombre. Yeah, like this a, is yeah. this is an ombre. And this is all hand done. This, this is, is very cool. Really sp I mean this is as light yeah. as a feather and it's just gorgeous. It's very and, stylish too. And, like and it, on, it would go on anyone. Like yeah. if you're a musician, right. if you're just a If you wanted to dress something guy. up, if you wanted to wear it with a pair of jeans and a yeah. blue coat, I mean the, it and it's just as light as air, and it's warm, and, and that's the beauty of it. It's so super, I have super to ask elegant. you, can you demonstrate? So I want to talk about, like, you brought me some scarves, but what are some ways that you recommend the, to wear them? The way that I think is probably best for most people is because you want to keep it up around your neck. Yeah. Um, and you can wear it um, with pretty much anything. Like, I wore a scarf today. I wore a scarf. And, yeah. And I just... 
I just fold it in half like this, mm -hmm. loop it around, and then pull this through here. Okay. And then what that does is it keeps it, minus the tag, it keeps it nice and short, <laughs> yeah. and I could even wear it, just, it in, just like yeah. this. Yep. I could pop up my collar like this. Oh. I can, oh, I can probably make a lot of the microphone. Um, but, and you could do this with a short jacket, with a long jacket. Yep. If you wanted to, you could just leave this out. You could just wrap this around your neck. You know, some people. Yeah, are, some people go that route, like the Ebenezer yeah. screwdriver. Right, and yeah. some people are more comfortable this way. I like it up almost yeah. like a. I want it up around my neck because I want to keep. The, it's the point of a scarf. Yeah, I that's think. It's yeah. to keep you warm. So. Because like uh, you yeah. can continue to keep that one warm because that's just yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah just so we have a couple of colors this in that. This kind of matches what I'm doing. Today. So this is also a scarf from the from, from the company called From the Road, and this is also this is wool and cashmere, and this again these women hand weave this wow. product okay. and then they hand stitch you can see this is all done by hand they so hand stitch two the, separate these, pieces. these two panels together and they do it so that the bottom is finished at different lengths it really shows yeah. the attention to detail it really shows the craftsmanship of being handmade so this and now is, this is almost like two scarves too yeah because you, this, can wear you can wear it with, you right can and i brought over. this one because it's got a little bit of red in it for valentine's day i thought yes. you know we could c combine those two things you can do like a scarf dance with it like robin Valen williams for like. valentine's day <laughs> oh, um, robin williams. this um, is like a blanket this is a blanket wow. actually so this oh. is camel hair this okay, is actually more hair, hair from animals. More, more hair. Perfect. This is, is it baby camel, camel hair? hair? Yeah, I don't think so. This is regular camel. But again, um, this is hand woven by these women on looms, like these old fashioned looms, mm -hmm. these wooden looms. And again, this is stitched down the center, so it's a couple of different panels, finished again uneven oh, on the yeah, bottom, that's just cool. to show how hand. So you could wear this as a wrap, you could yeah. wear this, you could use this in the home as a blanket on the couch, on the sofa. So this is something if you want to keep your Valentine warm on Valentine's Day. Definitely. Keep One of these bad boys will definitely yes. be the trick. And we have some other colors. Or all show. of them. All of them yeah. at once might, you know, might get a little overheated. I don't really think anyone would ever not want a cashmere or wool scarf. I mean, I just yeah. can't imagine someone being like, I, I mean, don't. This is so soft. Yeah. I mean, it's really super, super, super stuff. I'm yeah. in love with this. I had to have it. Yeah, this is know. really nice. Okay. This is the kind of thing you get pissed if your dog chews, though. Yeah, I wouldn't let the dog even You just have to, like, no, hide I'd it. probably get rid of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so an animal lover, I see. Yeah, I, I am an animal lover, until they mess with my camel hair. Who are your predictions for the dog show this weekend? Uh, I haven't been too too up on the puppy bowl, but... Not the um, puppy bowl, the dog show. Oh, the dog the show? The 2019 Westminster yeah, dog yeah, no, show. No, 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 no. The Bichon... Bichon Frise, I yeah, Bichon's you know, I, I hope so, because that's important. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> baby Bichon sweaters. We're, we're, we're moving right along here with the. <laughs> to socks, you always I bring me socks. Because I get over your haircut. I how know. amazing it Thank looks! Thank you. It I... totally changes your whole head. Thank you. <laughs> My whole head. I have less. I, you know, I cut some of the brains yeah, off. Yeah, I think. It. Yeah, so. it's like David and Goliath. Not <laughs> yeah. his hair, not as yep. strong. Yeah, yeah, not as uh, bright anymore. I brought socks because you know, just some simple ideas for Valentine's Day. If you wanted to get, get something cool and, and and cozy for Valentine's Day. Socks and underwear. I was gonna bring underwear, but I thought it would I know, be a I always make much. fun of you when you yeah, bring underwear. I know, so I didn't. You don't have like a man song? <laughs> no, out of no baby, cashmere man. Cashmere first combing, baby cashmere. Man thong. <laughs> um, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day with some tomatoes. <laughs> right? Tomatoes are sort of like hearts. Yeah, but well, you know, I wanna, you know heart. look, these are pink and gray, so a little bit of yes, color for Valentine's Day. Go. So you can pick up, you know, some color. I can just imagine Valentine's. you today at the store being like, what do I have that's red? That's exactly like what ripping I'm doing, running around, socks off the shelves. <laughs> these are tomatoes, they'll work. I want to be taking to this thing. She wanted to cancel on me today, and I said, no, no I did. way. I've never I said that in my you, life. You wanted to cancel. What is that? Watches? Yeah, it's a watch. Oh, my God. We'll talk about the watch. Yes, I want to talk, right, about let's talk about the watch. Watches are great gifts. All right. Better than jackets. Give me that. <laughs> So this is uh, a Kingsley watch. So Ramon Kingsley lives here in Providence. Um, he's pretty well known. These watches are carried in a couple of other shops here in Providence. So I think maybe one, just Providence Diamond. Um, but we happen to have a couple of his latest. Uh, Ramon um, is over at the Foundry, right across okay. from the mall, and he makes these watches here in Providence. Really and open the box. Absolutely oh, yeah. fantastic. Ooh. Um, now this is like heavy this, duty. This is serious, serious watch. Would you get like a credit card with the watch? Well, it's it's <laughs> a it's it, he has this club membership, so if you buy one of his watches, you become a member of his oh. club. Um, but what's beautiful about this, first of all, it's made locally. 
And I think that's amazing. And he does such a great job. And he's promoting these, and, and we've had them for a time now. We've sold a few, and I love them. Yep. People always ask about them, and this is one of the latest designs. Uh, so I absolutely love this. And I like this one particularly. It's got a rubber band, so it's really kind of sporty. Yeah. Um, we asked him to make this with a smaller crown on it because the crowns on the others were kind of big and a little bulky. That's smaller? Pe yeah, that's much smaller. That's actually still pretty big. Yeah, it's still pretty big. But I mean, it's cool. It looks like industrial. But it, it, it is. It has it. In, it's heavy. It's nice. It, it's industrial. It kind of feels. It would literally kind of, destroy. Kind of vintage. It would literally take up more than my actual I'm talking now. <laughs> <laughs> It has a vintage feel. <laughs> Don't interrupt me. It has a vintage feel, and, and it's sort of industrial, sort of like the feel of the store. Yeah. Um, so, but this is a very comfortable. What's nice is you can, if you like his watches, if you wanted this with a different band, or if you mm -hmm. wanted it with a different face, he'll custom make anything for you. So he's really talented, okay. really sophisticated, and in the world of customization, he's right on the money. He'll do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, it's beautiful. And they're made right here in Providence, which I think is, is Well, it's, I mean, cool. the, just the setup of the yeah. packaging. Yeah, is the really packaging important. is amazing. And what is this, like a little? This little diagram, yeah, like of, diagram. of watches, that's okay. all. Yeah. But and you get your and you get your here, tools. You can change the band and, nice. and all is that Is battery stuff. powered? Or? No, this is an automatic. So okay. this, this moves with motion. So you gotta, you so you gotta, gotta use, use this thing. Yeah, or have a watch winder, right? But I think it's cool when you can switch out bands because you get a couple different options. Yeah. If you've got a leather band, you can use it for different things. And like I said, he'll make he'll make anything. You know, you know, he'll if you you know if you have something specific in mind, he'll you want. You should great. make one with yeah. a baby goat. Yeah, I'll do that. Handle. I'll get right on that. You're making God. sweaters. Oh my God. <laughs> I brought coats. Yay! Moving right along. Moving right along. So this is a great company from Italy called Monto. Okay. And I don't know that I've brought this coat here before. I no. don't think I have. I don't think I have. But you do bring me lots of fur collared coats. Uh, I do. Well, I... this, well, what's nice about this fur collar is it comes off. Wow. Which is pretty cool because I think with the, with the collar off, actually, it looks a little better. Because really? See, I love like the bomber jacket look with the fur collar. Yeah, but you're a woman, and most guys would prefer it without the fur, to yeah. be honest. Really? But I, yeah, most guys. I, I show it both ways. I have it hanging in the store with and without. Oh, you, so you can yeah. buy it without, too? or? No, it comes with it, so you can just oh. leave it off if you don't want it. But you can give look, the fur part to your wife. You could give the fur part, to, and you could buy a couple of coats and then make a muff, a hand warmer. That's no. Make them off. No. Um, so this is this coat, this beautiful soft leather from Italy is lined in gray flannel right here on the storm flap. The entire interior of this is lined in gray flannel, That's which nice. is just fantastic. Beautifully so nice made. Nice and cozy. Beautifully made. Nice and cozy. Classic bomber style, sort of yeah. World War II. Love a bomber jacket. Yep. I love this because it's got the pocket entry on top, but also on the side, oh. which is you know, really nice. You just put your hands in here and keep them warm. Is that what pockets are for? That's what they are. <laughs> they are to hold things and to keep your hands warm. Or you heard you it can, here, guys. Or you can make them up. You heard it here, guys. You can make them up. Pockets are for your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, what would we do without you? I know, right? I'm so I can't get this button. I'm trying so hard. Never mind. I'm just trying to see what that pocket. No, don't. Just show me the next thing. Let's see. There we go. I'm just trying to make sure it's real. Sometimes these are like. It's not. Sometimes they're real. fake pockets. No. Ooh, I like long jackets. I know. This is this, and I, we've brought this in before. We've talked about this, but yes. I wanted to bring it in again because it's Valentine's Day, and it's for the guy who has everything, Ugh. and you wanted to do something really nice so for nice. him. Yeah. So this is Hedebrets. So Hedebrets is a luxury company from Italy. Remember when Paul Manafort was arrested uh, some time ago, and they kept talking about this ostrich coat that he had, and it was worth, I don't know, ten or $12,000, whatever yeah. it was. Well, anyway, this is the same company that made that coat. So this is... It's very relevant. <laughs> it's very relevant in today's Remember? political... Um, so anyway, this is waterproof cashmere. This is a three-in-one. This is waterproof cashmere here, okay. trimmed in uh, black leather. Um, you could wear this on its own, or you can wear it with the silk and nylon lining okay. that has trimmed in mink at the collar. Jeepers. Yeah, so this yeah. is super, I don't know if they're baby mink, but they're <laughs> mink, and they're super soft. No, I was going to ask. Touch it. So, I want okay. you to touch it. Okay, I'll touch it. It's beautiful. It is very it's soft. soft. I'm not going to touch soft. it like that. That's creepy. I'm just going to stop. Um, like, <laughs> so so this, this whole piece comes up. This isn't a vest. It's a jacket. So that comes out, and you can wear that. Okay. Or you can wear it, or you can wear this. Oh, so you, or you can, can wear this insert. Yes. This so alone. it's a three-in-one, right? It's a three-in-one. So really, exactly. really, Paul Manafort was getting three jackets. Well, he, I don't know that his was a three-in-one. <laughs> I think it was just a one-in-one. Just trying to bring it full circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Haircut. Oh, you're fucked, did 
too. Yeah, it did. It took a lot of um, smart The last piece I want to talk about today is, uh, is a new spring jacket we just got in from mm. Naples, Italy. Then so, this is Maro Blasi. We've talked about Maro a yeah. lot in the past. And um, so this is the, well, the spring jacket that we did this year. Mm. I love this. This is 100% little piano wool. Uh, we did this as, as a half lining. Yeah, it's nice and light. Yeah, it's, Can it, tell. It, it, because it's for spring. So the lining adds a lot of weight. I wanted to give it some structure, so we half lined it across the top of the back and on the sides. Okay. But not across the whole back because that's where a lot of heat can be for guys if they're sitting or whatever. So mm -hmm. we did this as a half lining. Super beautiful. I love this fabric. I think the texture of this is spot on. I think it'll breathe well in the spring and summer. I love the fact that this... Uh, window pane isn't a solid. It gives it a little bit more of a casual yeah, feel. We also sort of did broken these up. patch pockets mm -hmm. uh, on the bottom instead of a flat pocket, which gives the coat a sportier feel, which I love. Uh, this will be great with a pair of white pants in the summertime. Be great with a pair of beautiful uh, gray, pa gray, uh, gray yeah, pants. Gray, I was thinking gray. Fantastic. Um, when are you going to start bringing me male models? Um, we can do that. We okay. Can, we can start doing that. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. what do you want them to wear? <laughs> I don't know. You know that you're married now. Yeah. I mean, did you forget that already? I mean, I know it's been like a month, right? Hey, what did I, I didn't say that they have to be like attractive. I just. Oh, you just, it doesn't matter. You no. just get them anywhere. Just like, I, I would prefer to, to see them. this on a person <laughs> every time. I keep waiting for Josh to be you there. Keep every time. <laughs> Josh you keep bringing me these model, very skinny you know. men. Josh, Josh is so, he's so happy and cheery, so he would be a great model, right? He's you got keep, that Yeah, you keep bringing jaw. me these like little skinny men with the metal necks, and I, you know, I'm just thinking this would be better. We should have a fashion show. That's we could, we, we could do. have a fashion show Spring in, fashion this, show. in this six by six No, but we've got the back now opened up. We can shoot in there. Let's do it. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about that later. So you or got you could come to the store. Yeah. And Ooh, we do, yes. We could do a show we a could little do a bit. Show. Yeah. That's a great idea. We could do something like that. Okay, we should talk about this not right. on the show. Right. Um, so you have sales yeah. coming oh, yeah. up. So, Let's talk about your sales. Um, we're getting ready to have an after-season sale, uh, which will have, you know, items from previous seasons that will be on sale. Uh, that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So okay. if you're on our email list or if you're on our mailing list, you'll certainly be mm. getting a notice in the mail. If you're not... You can certainly jump on our website, blueprint5.com. You can add your web, your excuse me, your email address right there. You can make an appointment get on our website. Get notified, yeah. Get notified about the sale because that's important because you can come in and, and get some value, some so extra value. So that's going to be like winter items. Yeah, it'll be winter items. It'll be some spring items, you know, okay. maybe something, uh, you know, it'll be a mixture of things. Why you your know? voice just get so high? It'll be a little mixture <laughs> of things. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> <laughs> so, go in, go in for the sale a couple weeks, you know, yeah. not yeah. an exact date yet. We're working on it. Yeah, all right. We're so, we're, very, we're very getting. informative. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're getting go, there. We're getting go there. and follow the emails, and then you'll find out well, about also, the Also, I'll send it to Josh, and then you guys will put it on your website. We so, anybody who watches website. this or gets the emails from here, Fair boom. enough. Boom. All right. So, we go. talked about some gifts for Valentine's Day, which I'm going to, you can't buy them because I'm going to take them all. Yeah. Um, but after that, you can get. Tell me this isn't super warm. I know. It's, it's so like nice. So I'm just so cozy right yeah, now. I don't so want to. I don't want to stop the show because I'm too cozy. Okay. So, we went over watches, socks, scarves. I think all are great gifts. Yep. Some outerwear. Yep. A couple weeks, there's a sale. Yep. New things for spring. And then Coming next in month. Every day. Yeah, next month, we're going to talk spring. When we. Super come excited. Next, when I come in next time, I we'll should have. We'll have so much. Full rack. So much stuff for And spring. some, who knows, maybe so we'll much have a to couple talk of about. dogs for models. Yes, it'll be March. A baby cashmere goat. Baby cashmere, oh man, just please bring me a goat. That would be the best. We'll okay. Yoga with a goat. Goat yoga. Yeah. Goat yoga. That's a thing. Yeah. Well, Jim, thanks so much. It's always, always a, pleasure. a pleasure. Jinx. You want to sign off because you do that for me? Well, you no. Know, thank you so much. No, you sign off. You're so much better. I than know. Playing. Thank yep. you guys so much for tuning in with our resident guest, Jim Forday from Blueprint 5, giving us some style tips for Valentine's Day and ongoing. Really nice stuff. Thank you, as always. Thank you. We'll be back next week with another segment. Tune in on Thursday. Uh, for our weekly lifestyle segment. And in the meantime, check out golocalprov.com for all your news. And we will see you next week. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. Bye.